Back at Texas Motor Speedway where they've taken just a little bit of time to repair the wall on the backstretch where Justin Lofton's car dug in. Big wreck there, Lofton done for the day. Meanwhile, uh, Joey Logano, who started on the pole and led this race, had a discussion with crew chief Kevin Kidd about the adjustments they made on that race car this stop. Listen. All right, Joey. Get a little more air out of the left side. Uh, you just have to keep us up to speed here on the bottom and out. Uh, we did some wedge, one round of wedge and half round on the track bar. Try to get you to where you're screaming about being too free here to start. I think it's what's going to take to win. Yeah, I think so too. They agree if they're going to win, they had to make those adjustments. Wedge was included in there. Tim Brewer in the Craftsman Tech Garage can tell us more about Wedge. When you see a crew member come over to the right side of the car to make an adjustment, when he's up here at the top of the window, he's actually adjusting the wedge in the race car, changing the weight distribution from the right front to the left front. But when you see him back in this area right here, he's actually adjusting the track bar. And what that's doing is lowering the track bar, enabling the car to be tighter through the center of the corner and off. Thank you, Tim. And there you get an idea of what happened on the 20 car where they were talking about one, two. Yeah, you see the gas man, he pulls a little bit of the wedge out of the left rear and the gas catcher, he works on the track bar on the other side. So a lot of teamwork going on there. And there is Kyle Busch still beating him back out. He comes out in second. We can be tell you that Justin Lawson has been treated and released from the infield care center, so that is good news. Let's reset the field for you as they're uh, coming out of turn two. It will be Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, then Carl Edwards and Kevin Harvick in row two, Clint Boyer, Jamie McMurray, then Reed Sorensen, David Rudiman, Paul Menard, Greg Biffle. That's your top 10. And you know what's not striking about that? All 10 drove the Sprint Cup race earlier today. Well, they got adrenaline flowing right now. They don't care. They're not tired. I mean, once you get in that car, that adrenaline takes over, and you've got to get the job done. Especially for Kyle Busch, running this strong, running up front. Man, he's not even thinking about being tired right now. When it'll really hit him is tomorrow morning. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. All right. Kyle has selected the inside line. Lights are out on the pace car. The Camaro pulls down onto pit road. Coming down towards the two lines that we have grown so much to know about after last week's deal at Phoenix. And we're back to green flag racing here at Texas. again gets another good restart Carl Edwards trying to pick off the spot though as he is on the low side underneath Joey Logano here comes Harvick into the mix as well there's Boyer and McMurray they're going to try three wide here Boy, off a of turn four there's a lot of grip up there but we saw three wide late in the cup race and there was a huge wreck took out many cars it got tight right there it was exactly that situation that we saw right there the way it happened in the cup race these guys are playing a little nicer giving themselves just a little bit more room and it was kevin harvick saying hey, I, 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 this is deja vu i'm pulling back <laughs> <Check out. laughs> and Check here he goes now, oh, now they now get together. contact Whoa. hang on clint boyer come on guys we were just bragging on you now we're going to take a look at the right front of clint boyer's car he got hit pretty hard right there, enough to, 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 to turn him completely sideways. Look at that. Yeah, he's got a lot of damage to that right front fender. He's hoping it's not rubbing. Not I seeing don't any see smoke. smoke. Not, not yet, but boy, he is dropping like a rock right here. Here goes Biffle around him. Here comes Menard on the high side. Our right front fender's tore up pretty good. Tire's still up. Well, these guys are just digging for all this uh, position when they got good tires on the car right after these restarts. That's when they feel like they can gain the most. So they're really aggressive on these restarts. Steven Wallace goes around him. Trevor Bain looks like he's coming underneath him. We're taking a good close look at the damage. I don't see any tire rub, though. That was pretty stupid. Well, you heard Clint's comment. He thought it was stupid. Just be smart here. We'll get her fixed. Three wide on the top. Boy, Three he, wide on the top. He is sliding up the hill and getting passed by everybody. Leffler goes by. Keslowski goes by. Here comes Colin Brown. Let's take another look. See if we get a different angle here. Ooh. Man, I think this day just all ran out of room right there, Andy. Yeah, that's that same deal you talked about, Rusty. That turn two is just, it flabs out so fast. You got three uh, wide. Three wide. Not enough room right there. Clear up one lane after the 33. Well, Harvick's got damage on his left rear quarter. There's Colin Brown clearing the 21. So Boyer has now dropped to 17th. Now he's going to be lucky if he doesn't blow that right front tire out. 
if he could get a caution and get that fender fixed and get a new tire on there, he'll be fine. But uh, he's got to hold his breath for a while. Yeah, I tell you, you run close to 200 miles per hour down on these corners right here. And what comes to my mind a lot, Andy, is risk versus reward. I mean, do you want to stay out there and push this thing because you're a cup driver and that's your bread and butter? You get hurt in these things, that's not going to work good. Rudiman side by side with Paul Menard and I saw a puff of smoke and I'm wondering if that's coming from the 33. Yeah, he got damage in the left rear. Uh, now you got something smoking more right there. Well, we'll that's the 33 radio. Yeah, it sounded like he was answering you. Oh, now he's oh, on the right whoa, front. Hold your line. Hold your line. Hold your line. Stay up there. Yeah. Just stay up there, Clint. Just stop right there. We can come down right here. We don't have to go around the track. One more car. Turn down now. Turn down. Plenty of room. You okay? Third caution of the day. He was 20 or 17th at the time of the crash. Let's take this into the garage. Yeah, that, that was hard. Hit hard. The garage. And there is Richard Childress climbing Come down, down from here, the hall. Come on down. So the string, we had uh, four of the first six races won by the number two qualifier. Clint qualified second, but it's not going to be his day today. Well, Marty, this is a tough one, really, because when he got the right front damage, I didn't see any smoke coming off the fender or anything. Evidently, the tire itself got damaged when that car hit with Kevin Harvick, but it definitely was not rubbing a fender. All right, let's go on board with the 21. But the car had slowed down quite a bit. You can see how much damage right here, even before the tire blows out. Now the tire's down. And man, do it. No way to hold on to that. And why do they always blow when they're going at the corner? Close to 200 miles an hour going at the corner, and that's where it happens. Pit crew chasing him back to the garage as Clint Boyer has a lot of damage on the 21. Stay with us. This might be a bit of an extended caution. You can see some of the crews out there uh, looking at the safer barrier and uh, making some repairs after Clint Boyer slid up into that wall. Now let's go back one earlier caution because uh, Justin Lofton is with Jamie Little. Well, Justin Lofton has been checked and released and he's okay. A little bit fired up though. Tell us first of all how the conditions are out there and what happened in your case. Uh, the track's great. Uh, the number 71 WeekendWarriorsTV.com uh, Toyota camera is on a rail. Uh, we started in the back and we're definitely working our way through the front. And, uh, I, honestly, I like the track now after the cup guys ran on it because everything was already moved in. We can go to the top right off the bat. and. Uh, just racing hard. I mean, coming off the corner, had a, you know, we, I was a little tight, and Trevor was probably a little tight too. And uh, he bounced off the wall, and you know, caught my right front, which put me in the wall and uh, ruined our day. But uh, hopefully, we'll be back for Charlotte and uh, get that car up front in uh, top five where it's supposed to be. All right, this is the car he wants to take to Charlotte. He is a Truck Series regular. Let's go over to Vince, who's in the garage. Frustrating uh, day for Clint Boyer in the cup race and out here in the nationwide race. What happened in the contact there with Harvick? I don't know. I mean, I was I was trying to stay off of him, and he crammed it in there three wide like that uh, pretty early in the race. I mean, just trying to be patient there. We was a little bit off, and I was going to let him back around. He got, you know, hiccup behind somebody, but uh, I don't know. I guess he's got a lot to prove in this series. Frustrating finish for Clint Boyer. It's been a tough day today. A lot of damage on that uh, 21 car, guys. And... Do you want to place any blame on this deal? Yeah, I'm not going to place any blame because this particular part of the racetrack, I mean, you see Clint right on the bottom, very upset. I totally understand. But, man, you got so much momentum, Andy, coming off, and he, he had to let that car drift up. And when that happened, he just couldn't pull it off of him. Yeah, what we saw right there at the replay was just after, just when it happened. But before that, we didn't really see what created this three-wide situation that they were talking about. I think that might have been what Clint was frustrated about. Yeah, this... It's right here. I mean, there's enough blame to go around. It's just no room coming off that corner, and yeah. especially not for three wide. Well, and I, I think when we get a chance, if we get a chance to talk to Kevin Harvick, here's the contact later. That's, you know, that's the result of the contact. And they are still working on the safer barrier, so it's going to give us a chance to step aside. And uh, we'll reset it for you here at Texas Motor Speedway. 84 laps of 200 are down. 